Production. Recorded live. Hello and good evening. Uh, this is Franco Collins speaking to you live on University of Ucadia Talk Show this Wednesday, the 26th of October 2011. Thank you to all those that will be listening tonight live on this call through TalkShoe.com as well as those that will be downloading this call later by going to University of Eucadia, which is http university.ucadia.info or will also be listening to the recording as it is uploaded onto TalkShoe. Tonight, I want to share with you a historic I feel a very important document, a document which we mentioned last week would be ready. It's called Ritus Virum, which is Rite of Truth or Writ of Truth. And the other name for it is the 144 Truths. So there's 144 Truths to get to, and I'd like to walk through this with you, if people don't mind tonight given its historic importance. And as I go through that, share with you the context of it, and in particular, the honouring of the memory of Martin Luther, a man who did dare to speak out 494 years ago on All Hallows' Eve, October the 31st, which is coming up in a few days' time. Now, if you haven't got a copy already, or if you're listening to this audio later, I'm now going to give you where you can go and get a copy of it. You can get a copy of the Ritus Virum, the 144 Truths, by going to the website one-heaven.org. And when you get to one-heaven.org on the home page, you'll see that there's a new box there. And that box says, Ultimus Tri Ritus Probatum Romanus. I'm terribly sorry about all the Latin that we keep doing, but it is part and parcel of this. Uh, if you click on that box, on that black box, you'll get to a series of links, and on the right-hand side, you'll see a link that says Rit Virum. And if you click on that Rit Virum, you'll get to the place that you can download the links by clicking on 144 Truths. If you click on 144 Truths, you'll get the PDF download that we'll be going through tonight. For those that are new to the call, just to remind you how we normally do these calls, what I like to do normally is for the first hour, cover new points with you, cover new research with you. Tonight we're just going to be focusing purely on this. And then in the second hour, I look forward to getting your questions, your comments, uh, by getting you to type in either a question, by putting all caps question into the chat, and then we'll read those questions off, or by pressing star 8 or hash 8 and getting to the queue where I'd love to hear from you and hear your questions live. Let's get started then on Ritus Virum and the context. I'm just going to refer to some comments in this page Richus Virum, which I've referred you to on the website One Heaven. And the first point I'd like to make is how extraordinary it is as time goes by that the ruling elite change things before us so that we forget how important certain days were. When we think of October the 31st, we now think of Halloween. And most of us are children of Halloween, so that we think that Halloween is dressing up as ghouls and goblins, devils and, and dragons, that we share sweets through the concept of trick or treat, and that we celebrate uh, this, uh, this holiday evening. Well, for 400 plus years, far from it being a pagan holiday, October the 31st was celebrated as Reformation Day, a day considered sacred to anyone 
that genuinely believed in liberty, that genuinely believed in freedom and equality, that gave a damn about this world. Because Reformation Day was the true day that celebrated what it meant to protest, to stand up against tyranny, to stand up and be a patriot, to stand up for your community. Because it was the day that celebrated the original true protesters. Not the part-time latte protesters that we've seen in different parts of the world today. Not the dress up, wear the flag, go back to basics tea party movement that we see. These were the real protesters. People that generally were prepared to stand and in fact give their lives for freedom, for an ideal. And it started with a man, Martin Luther. We have forgotten so much that when you hear the word Martin Luther, most children now think you're talking about Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was named after Martin Luther. And October the 31st, 1517, approximately 494 years ago, Martin Luther posted on the door of All Saints Church in the town of Wittenberg a document that was to change the world, his 95 Thesis. Now, unfortunately, we don't have an original copy of Martin Luther's 95 Thesis. We only have copies that are alleged to be Martin Luther's 95 Thesis. And if you want to see the terrible and horrendous fraud and forgery that is alleged to be Martin Luther's 95 Thesis, I've actually given you the link there, and you can click on that page on one-heaven.org. Click on the black box there. Go down to the link of Rit Virum, and you'll see that there is also a link there for 95 Thesis in blue. We know this is not the original words of Martin Luther, who started the whole protest movement. We know this for two obvious reasons when you read them. The first is half the phrases, half the statements are in praise of the Roman cult. And there's no way that Martin Luther wrote half his thesis praising the Roman cult. It's absurd. And yet the modern hierarchy of the church, the modern hierarchy of the Church of England of the Protestant religions, of the Calvinists, and all the others now today are willing to stand and swear blue in the face that the 95 Thesis that they produce and publish is authentic. There was no way Martin Luther spent half his arguments in praising the Pope. The other reason we know this is a forgery is that for the remaining half, there is no way that Martin Luther merely spoke in esoteric theological terms, technically, about indulgences. Why can I be so certain? If the most valuable artefacts had not been deliberately destroyed in a beautiful ancient city in World War II that had openly pledged to the Allies and to the Nazis that they were a city of refuge, a city that refused to take sides, a city that refused to have any military instruments uh, or buildings or factories, so that everybody knew that this city would maintain its integrity. If that city hadn't have been deliberately destroyed, then I believe I would be able to show you what Martin Luther had written. But unfortunately, a sacrifice of 250,000 souls of men, women and children, of innocent men, women and children and priceless artefacts in the city of Dresden where they were burnt alive under the orders of Eisenhower, under the orders of the President of the United States and his elite advisors, murdering a quarter of a million people. We don't have that 
anymore. But whatever Martin Luther wrote, it was so dramatic, it was so significant that it changed the world forever. If it wasn't for the true 95 Thesis that we no longer have, there would have been no protest movement. There would have been no peasants' revolt. There would have been no change to the feudal system. There would have been no reformation. There would have been no King James Bible. Anyone, anyone that professes to believe the King James Bible, and as you know, there are a few people out there that do, if they have an ounce of credibility in their lives, if they have an inch of patriotism in their hearts, then by God they should take back October the 31st as Reformation Day and stand up with all those who are listening to this call side by side. But as you know, there's far too many people who will say one thing and do another. There would be no Church of England. There would be no Protestants. There would be no Calvinists. There would be no Lutherans. There would be no Baptists. There would be no Evangelical. There would be no philosophy of, of liberty and the freedoms and the aspirations that we believe that we live under, or some people believe we live under. Some other people know just exactly what kind of tyranny we do live under. But the idea, the idea would certainly be vastly different to what it is. And it comes back to this point, October the 31st, 1517. Well, we know that the memory of Martin Luther has been disgraced. And we know that the memory of true protest has been corrupted. So what do we do? Eucadia. And there are many things that people say about Eucadia. When I raised concerns last week, and all I said was concerns, I never named names, I merely said that when people use information and make presumptions that have no basis, Far from helping people, they can hurt people. Because I made that statement of truth, there were people who vomited forth once again where they said UK is a cult. Over the last year, I've made plain to you, I've shared with you, and you have been, many of you, been immeasurably helpful in being brave, courageous, and willing to stand up in giving notice to the ruling elite so that history is served. And now we find ourselves at this point. In a few days, we will come to October the 31st again. Now, history tells us that Martin Luther, in the first instance, only nailed one copy of his thesis to one door, the door of the Church of All Saints at Wittenberg, and this was what was the public notice and public record at the time. That's what the public notice and public record was. It was the church doors. Presumably there are other things on those doors as well. Well, let's go through this then, the Ritus Virum tonight. Let's share the contents of it. Let me explain to you how and why it's been written. And then please consider what you feel you can do. Now, I'm not asking anyone to go out and start putting nails in church doors. Certainly, that would be a recipe for being arrested. But there are many notice boards. There are notice boards in the local clerk's office. There are notice boards and public notices in the chambers of councils and counties and districts and state parliaments. There are all manners of places to put